Hey everybody, welcome back to Sampling and Reason Part 2. I really appreciate everyone being patient waiting for this part. I know it's been a while. Um, I was just waiting for Reason to upgrade to version 6. That was just all I was waiting for. And now that we're at version 6, um, we'll come back and do part 2 to this. Now, we're going to have three parts total. The third part's going to be uh, Harmonic, who is a student of ours and a fine producer doing some drum samples into Kong. And it's a really different technology and methodology for sampling when we're doing sound effects than when we're doing melodic instruments. So that'll be part three. It's really cool. Part two, uh, the part we're in now, is going to be making a melodic instrument sample. And the melodic samples are a little bit trickier to do than the non-melodic samples. Um, we have a couple other things that we have to do that we have to, some technologies we have to know and a couple things that the computer is going to do for us. Uh, so we're going to look at all that. We have assisting us today uh, one of our better students, Andrew Scanlon, who is in the vocal booth. Um, you can do most of this at home now. You know, we have a real studio with a booth and everything. Uh, but the truth is, this is line in because it's going to be a bass. So anybody can do this. Uh, just you have a good interface. And, and you remember, every piece of the puzzle does matter with this. So good musician, which we have. Good instrument, which we have. Uh, we have a really nice interface with an Apogee Duet. Um, and then we're sampling at a sample rate of 88.2, just in case we want to mess with the samples. It gives us more information. Uh, I like recording audio at a higher sample rate myself. I love 88.2. Uh, that's going to be located in the preferences sample rate right here. Uh, there's the interface is the duet. Another thing to think about is the buffer size. Now, if the buffer size is too high, we're going to hear latency, meaning that we're going to hear what's coming through the microphone, and then we're going to hear the playback. They're going to be separated. Uh, if he's listening to himself with headphones, it's going to be really confusing to play. 128 samples is a fine buffer size setting. There's, uh, it, It's low enough with the latency that it sounds like uh, the recording and the playback are at the same point, and as well as it still gives the computer a little bit of horsepower to play with. We don't need to go down to 64 samples, which we could, um, that might choke the computer a little bit. So high sample rate, my opinion, buffer size being low is a fact. You need that. Uh, so those are our settings. Let's just real quickly, even though in part one we covered this, just to make sure we get the routing. So whatever your interface is, you, you're going to know which input you're plugged into. So make sure that you know. And then when you look in Reason, you'll come up here and you'll find your input. Now, Reason has lots of inputs. We can only sample up to stereo. So basically, this makes it pretty easy. So you find like we're, we're plugged into input one right now. So we get input one, and we take it to the sampling input section. So this could not be easier. I love this. I keep saying this. But in Reason, they've made it so simple. It's a dedicated sample input. So as long as we're hooked up into left or right or both, if we want to sample stereo, uh, we're good. Right, so this is going to auto direct this audio to whichever sampler or drum machine. Because remember, NNXT, N19, Kong, and Redrum can all sample. So, whatever the device is, it will automatically route that audio to the sample button, basically. And we'll be good to go. All right, before we start recording, we do, we are engineers, we do want to get a level with this. So, let's go ahead and uh, give me a couple notes. It's a pretty good level. We're at about neg 12. We have some headroom left to process. Uh, not too low that we would get any of the noise floor built into the sample. Uh, it's not the old days of tape, so we don't have to max out the signal to noise ratio. Um, but you still don't want too low of a signal. We want to get a good hefty signal in there. You know, up to what would be on this, we'd look at neg four, uh, neg eight, something like that. A little bit of headroom, but still plenty of amplitude. So I think our level looks good. Get the nod of the head in there that Andrew is ready. Um, I like that he speaks with the strings. I, I, I understand that language. That is hurry up and start sampling me. So we like that. All right, so all we have to do to do this is click the sample button. Now, if you watch part three and you see how we do this in Kong, it's going to be a little bit different. The sampling into Kong, I think, is much easier because we're not worried about some of the rules of matching notes 
to keyboard playback. So that's that concept of root note, which is the original pitch. Now we're not going to go too deep into how we would manually do this, uh, all of the, the kind of technology behind it, the thoughts and considerations, because Reason and NXT in particular has the ability to do some of these things automatically. And that's the method today that I'm going to show you. If you want to learn how to do all this manually, I would suggest one of our online classes or ground campus or something where we spend a lot of time on those details. But the truth is, the reason's clever enough that if you give it a little bit of help, do it the right way, that some of these functions that are built in will help us make a melodic sample. But once again, melodic samples are a very different idea than doing rhythmic samples like beatbox stuff or sound effects or things like that. All right, so I have a clean Belankin NXT. I got it that way by right-clicking and initializing the patch. Just in case you auto load a sample, we want to clear all that stuff out. We're going to manage the samples that we create over here under the audio section of the tool window. And it's going to be an assigned sample and it's going to belong to the NNXT. We'll see the samples start to populate. I'm going to record an individual note. I'm going to hit the edit button during the record. Then we're going to crop it. We're perhaps going to normalize it, but we're going to play with that because that's season to taste. Then we're going to fade out and we're going to label it. So we're going to build basically an octave worth of samples. And then we're going to let the computer do its magic to the samples. And it's going to set the root note from pitch detection. It's going to auto map everything. Mapping is the concept of assigning keys to a sample, key or keys to a sample to trigger it. And we're going to let the computer do all that uh, automatically for us, do the heavy lifting. So I believe, once again, we are ready to go. When we sample, there's two ways. I can click and hold the sample button, and that will stop sampling when I let go of the mouse up to 30 seconds, or I can single click the sample button, and it will keep the window open for the full 30 seconds or until I hit stop or hit edit. I'm going to use that one. I'm going to click it once. It's going to open the sample window. I'm going to point at Andrew. He's going to play the note. I'm going to let it sustain a little bit, and then I'm going to go into edit mode. Sound good? All right. So you can see I'm letting it sustain a little bit. We can see it drawing out in here. A lot of sustain on that bass there. I'm going to go into edit right now. So that was an aesthetic decision. I could have stopped that at any point, and then I could put a fade out on it if I don't want the note held that long. I kind of like uh, in 2012 with all the RAM and hard drive space and resources and fast computers, getting samples with a little bit of a tail on them because we can. And if I want to hold the note, it's just going to be more realistic. You're going to know this is a real bass because of that decay. Um, so we have the sample. We're going to crop it. We're going to play it. Sounds pretty good. Love it. We're going to fade out because if we don't fade out, it'll have a hard edge on it. So there's my fade out. Go ahead and stop that. That's a lot of sustain. We love that. Uh, we're going to give that a label. And I believe we were sampling the low E on the bass. So we are going to type in the capital E there for that. And uh, now if I normalize this, which I'll do, you'll see Actually, we'll undo that. We don't want to normalize the fade out. We click off of that. We normalize the sample. And we're going to go ahead and listen. I'm going to turn the volume down just a little bit, just in case that's loud. We're going to go ahead and play it. OK, so it's not that I don't like that, but I know if I normalize it, normalizing takes peak audio up to 0 dB. It doesn't give me a lot of headroom after the fact. But you need to listen. So in your samples, depending on how much amplitude you actually record with, you may or may not want to normalize. I'm going to put that on everybody. Remember, there's an undo button that's right here. Um, that's really cool. We also have reverse, which doesn't come into play right now. But if I was sampling vocals, that might be pretty cool. Um, the edit window within here is really, really simple. So just kind of look a couple parameters. Uh, if I want to crop things, it's the start end right there. I make a selection that'll crop the selection if I want to use a selection to crop with. Um, so I'm feeling happy about that. I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to click off of that sample. See how it deselects that sample. If I don't do that, the next sample will just replace and or erase that, however you want to look at it. So when I deselect that, that means it'll add an additional sample. So I believe we're ready for number two, which in my humble opinion would be the F coming up from the E.
So once again, it's my choice on how much to let this sustain. If we're sampling other things like drums, of course there's not this much sustain. Um, this may be one of the few instruments where we'd be able to drive this much sustain. Obviously a stringed instrument comes to mind. I'm gonna go ahead and hit edit. So I'm gonna crop it. So you see it detects the transients. It puts the start marker right there. All I have to do is hit crop. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fade this one right there. And then, but maybe even first, let's think about this a different way. Maybe I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna crop it to that point, and then I'm gonna still fade that end right there. Just so you can see a couple different techniques. There's no real right or wrong, it's whatever works. Put the F there, playback. Sounds great. Obviously a real instrument. You can hear the fluctuation in the tone a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and save it. And let's do one more. So this is gonna be the F sharp. Let's take that one again. So you can see before we do this, you see that there's a kind of a restart button. Boom. Better tone. So don't forget this button right here in the middle of sampling. If I just want to start the sampling over again, I click that and then I go to edit. We're going to crop it. Say I want about this much of this one. I'm going to crop it again. Then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to fade it out. I'm going to call it F sharp and play it. Love it. So there's other ways we can get volume back later than normalizing. We're going to save that. We're going to click off of it. And this goes to the G. All right, so we crop. And we fade out, and we label, and we play it. Sounds good. We'll save it. Now we're just going to kind of drive through a couple of these. I'm going to do 12 of these or an octave's worth of them, but we're going to go kind of quickly now. So this will be G sharp. All right, so we crop. So the other thing to think about with this is how many notes do we need to sample to make this? Truthfully, we could sample one note and let the computer stretch the note over how many steps we need. The problem with that is that you actually lose fidelity further away from that root note or the organic pitch of the sample. So modern samplers utilize technologies where you would sample like a piano, you would sample all 88 of the notes with 16 levels of velocity or intensity. Um, that's a very modern way to do this. I love that. So I'm kind of a fan of sampling more than less because it's going to let us keep the realism in it. And I believe that would have been G sharp. All right, so at this point, we're just going to fly through this stuff real quickly to kind of build and then we'll, we'll do the, the technique that we need to on the other side of this. It's our last sample here. So we're at uh, D sharp climbing up from the low E on the bass. Little sustain, beautiful sound. Edit and we will crop. I'm gonna crop a little bit more. So I select what I want to stay, hit crop, gets rid of everything else. And we'll do a nice little fade out and we will call this D sharp. And that is our octave. So at this point, we have all the samples collected. I've labeled them. Very good work, thank you, Andrew. Love it, love the tone. Um, but everything is mapped across the entire keyboard. So basically we have a big layered mess of audio. So if we were doing this manually, we would go through and we would assign every sample uh, to a range of keys, a one key or a range of keys, depending on what you're sampling. And then we would have to match the root note. So if this E down here was E in the first octave, I would select that and then I would command click. This is an NXT thing, by the way. Root note, root note is generic, but how I'm doing this is particular to NXT. And I would command click down here to E1. So that then would set the original pitch at E1, which was the original pitch of the sample, right? So that's sampling melodic instruments 101 right there. But the cool thing is we have a computer that can do this for us. So I'm gonna hit command A, which selects all of the samples. I'm going to come up under edit and I'm going to go set root note from pitch detection. It's looking at every note 
It's analyzing the note and then it's setting the root notes. So it even says setting root notes from detected pitches, right? So we've given it a some sustain in those samples. So it's chewing on that. This is an i7 27 inch iMac even. Um, now we've assigned the root notes to the correct notes. But at this point, we still have the notes mapped over a bunch of keys. So we have a layered mess still. So we have to auto map these notes. So the E plays on E, F plays on F. We come back. Auto map zones, boom. So now we're going to go back and we're going to target the sampler. So I have to play through with that. And we're going to come back into reason. Yeah, let's go ahead and just go to the mixer F5 real quickly. I'm going to get rid of F8, but maybe before we get rid of the tool window, just look. So we see that base samples right there that's the name of the nnxt there's all my samples right so that's where all that lives i'm going to hit f8 and put that away base samples right here i'm going to go ahead maybe turn the gain up just a little bit i'm going to compress this just a bit and then uh we'll leave the eq alone off of this one and then we're just going to turn this up just a little bit all right so we've got beautiful natural bass sound we will be using this patch. That is as realistic as it's gonna get because we just sampled it from his base. Now, a couple of the things that we could do with this, um, just real quickly, I'm not thinking reverb, send and return with this. Um, one of the cool tricks in Reason is in my mix channel device, I have a built-in insert to actually put insert effects in there. So I'm gonna right click uh, below that red line and I'm gonna put in let's say uh, Scream 4 and uh, Pulverizer down there. So these are both somewhat sonic destruction effects, um, but they're compressors as well. So I'm gonna back off of the compression and back off the dirt and pulverizer a little bit. So Scream 4 really gives that a little bit of juice. Um, we'll turn that down. And actually I'm gonna go to tape mode on this to do a little tape simulation. Glorious glorious sound right there. So pulverizer gives a little bit of that compression, a little bit of that analog compressed love. Um, I could turn up the dirt a little bit with this. I also have uh, the ability to have different kinds of filters. So if I don't want all those high frequencies, I have a low pass built into this amongst other filters. high frequencies. Uh, within the Scream 4, that gave me the tape setting. So I'm kind of hitting this twice with tape saturation um, and a little bit of compression, but it really kind of gave me a little bit more juice. That's a beautiful sustain, Andrew. Well done. So, you know, that's uh, for, an, for a, a real sample, you know, that's got a lot of life to it. So hopefully, um, you've gotten something out of this. So think back about some of the concepts. We talked about uh, setting levels. Um, we looked at the routing, but that's also in part one. So we wanna make sure that we can feed the instrument through the interface into the samplers. But remember, it's also very easy. You just have to bring in that input, the one you're plugged into physically into the sampling input. It will connect the dots to the rest of it. Get a good level, not too little, not too much, kind of the mama bear kind of thing in the middle with it. Um, because you've seen that with the uh, compressors and with the uh, inserts, and things like that, that we can up the amplitude after the fact. Um, make sure good musician, good instrument, uh, good interface. Take your time, get the levels right. We did this in a hurry and we still got a great patch out of this. Um, I will certainly be using this patch because I can't take Andrew everywhere with me, but I can certainly take the samples on my hard drive, which is one of the great things about sampling is uh, we can now say bye-bye, don't need you anymore, Andrew. So hopefully you got a lot out of this. Watch the video as many times as you need. Remember, set root note from pitch detection and auto map zones are a big deal with the melodic ones. And then come back and watch part three and we're gonna get uh, some great drum samples into Kong. See you guys later.